My name is Inshira Premium and welcome to this masterclass on strategic case study. Now the strategic case study is the final paper required to be written in the ICAG professional qualification program. However, since its inception in the professional qualification program of the institute, many students have had challenges in the ability to be able to ultimately pass this examination. And so the purpose of this masterclass is to be able to share some light on the various things that you need to focus on, the thoughts and the mindset that you need to develop in order to position yourself to pass the examination. Now, although some students have had challenges in this paper and some people have not been able to become chartered accountants all because of this paper, other people go into the exam or sit for the exam and pass it at one attempt. The question we then have to ask ourselves is, is the paper difficult? Is the paper challenging? Or what is really causing students not to be able to excel? And what is really making others go in there and excel as fast as possible? I think that it is about the lack of understanding in relation to the strategic case study syllabus and how the examination is generally structured to be able to ensure that students actually understand the syllabus and also be able to pass the examination. And so in this masterclass, my goal is to be able to walk you through the entire syllabus, the key things that you need to focus on so you can position yourself to pass the examination. Now, I want you to stay with me carefully, become, empty your mind and be as a child here. I don't care if this is the first time you're writing the case study examination or probably you've written it for five times, for four times, for three times, or this is your second time. I don't care about that. All I care about is empty your mind, be like a child and pretend as though you don't know anything about this course because I want to really walk you through the basic issues that you need to understand and how you can assimilate the models and what you need to look out for in order to know which model, which principle, which concept, which framework is actually being requested so that you can really position yourself to pass the examination. Now, in this first episode, I want to share with you six brutal truths of strategic case study, and that will then position us to go through the entire series so that we can position ourselves to pass the examination. So the question is, what are the six brutal truths of the strategic case study examination? So number one, the strategic case study paper is not like other subjects. When you compare case study to other subjects, there is a difference. Now, unlike corporate reporting, where we know definitely that in the exam hall, there's going to be question on evaluation of financial statement. And that can come from whether we are looking at common size analysis, traditional ratio analysis, or the cash flow analysis. We know there is going to be a question on ethics, whether you like it or not, it's going to be there. We know there is going to be question on either business valuation or corporate reconstruction, financial reorganization. And we know there is definitely going to be a question on consolidated financial statement, then the accounting standards. When you take a subject also like the advanced audit and assurance, we know definitely there is going to be a question on ethics. We know there will be questions on audit procedures and audit evidence. We know there will be questions on audit reporting. We know definitely there will be questions on acceptance of engagement, that is audit planning and risk assessment at the end of the day. And we know There'll be questions in relation to public sector auditing. But that is not the same for strategic case study. The strategic case study examination is not set in stone. In other words, it's not definite that certain things are going to be there. And that is the first thing you need to understand, that it is not like any other subject. Because it is not like any other subject, it means that it requires a different strategy, approach, and techniques to pass the examination the attitude must be different. So you could sit around and two weeks to the exams, three weeks to the exams and pick corporate reporting and be able to do a few things and go to the exam hall and probably pass the exam or take an advance audit and assurance paper and do something about it because you know the key areas that are going to be coming up, do something and probably you can pass the exam. But you cannot adopt or use the same strategy, the same technique for the strategic case study examination. It is a different thing. So you need a different strategy. You need a different approach. You need a different attitude and an overall different mindset for the case study examination. Three, it is not about you and Paul, Baba. It requires in-depth understanding of the key models and how they apply in specific situations. 
Yes, one of the key things you need to understand is the strategic management aspect of the strategic case study syllabus. And in the strategic management aspect, you're going to be looking at a lot of models or frameworks that must be used right from environmental analysis coming to various strategic decisions or choices that companies must make in order to gain competitive advantage, talking about issues in relation to growth strategies, expansion strategies, corporate parenting strategies, and also issues about change management. There are a lot of models that you need to know about. However, it is not just about your ability to regurgitate the models that you have chewed. In other words, let's say you are looking at internal environmental analysis and you're looking at the strategic capacity of the company as well as the strategic position of the company, you're going to be using the SWOT analysis. It's not just about, oh, this is the strength, this is the weakness, or maybe you are looking at competitive or the industry analysis. It is not just about using the Potter's Five Forces. So in the Potter's Five Forces, we are looking at the bargaining power of customers, bargaining power of suppliers, competitive rivalry. We are looking at threat from new entrants, availability of substitute product. It's not just about your ability to recite, regurgitate the baba that you have chewed in relation to the context of the models. You need to understand when that model can be applied and how you can pick those things out from the question and ultimately use the model to be able to address a challenge that a case study is having at the end of the day. And that is the third thing that you must understand. Number four, the examiner decides whatever he wants to focus on and not you. The case may have a lot of issues, but the examiner could choose whatever approach of questioning. This makes the examination challenging but also means you cannot pass the examination with an average attitude towards studies. And that is the key aspect of strategic case study. The precinct is going to be released. We're going to be getting into this in the second episode. The precinct is going to be released. But you see, what the examiner will ask you ultimately in the exam or it's not in your spheres. So you don't just sit down and say, oh, I'm going to wait when the precinct comes, then I'm going to be serious about the precinct, then I'm going to read analysis from all manner of places, 173 pages of analysis, then I'll go into the exam hall and inshallah, I'm going to pass. I can guarantee you, inshallah, you're going to fail the exam because the examiner has his own approach, has his own mindset, has what he wants to look out for in the case study that has been given to you. So you cannot, again, just have an average attitude and think you will go into the exam hall to pass the examination. And that is the fourth thing that you must understand when it comes to dealing with strategic case study. Number five, you will be positioned as a consultant to provide solutions and make suggestions to improve the company. This requires an extensive understanding of strategic management and other business issues. In the exam hall, you are not just being positioned as a student but you are being positioned as a consultant who is able to identify the various challenges that a, comp a company is facing and most importantly, provide ways and means on how some of these challenges can be dealt with and handled. So it requires a broader knowledge and understanding. Because one thing you must understand is that the strategic case study paper is a conglomerate of other papers. So things that you learned in management accounting in level two, budgeting, and all those things cannot be applied in case study. Things that you learned in financial management, investment appraisal, dividend decisions, sources of finance can be applied in strategic case study. Things that you learned in corporate reporting in relation to ratios, performance evaluation, and all of those things can be applied there. Things that you learned in advanced audit and assurance in relation to ethical issues and how governance of a company must be structured all that is applied also in strategic case study. So it is not about, yeah, I'm learning case study, so I'm learning case study. It's about having that broader knowledge, that broader understanding that enables you to be able to address all of the issues that the examiner is going to be raising in the exam or in the form of questions so you can write out your answers and position yourself to pass the examination. And the sixth thing that you must understand when it comes to strategic case study is, it is an English paper. You must build your vocabulary and be able to comprehensively express yourself in a compendious manner. Listen carefully. It is an English paper. Yes, I know you know it's an English paper, but you see, many people lack their ability to be able to express themselves. Over the years, what I've seen is that 
Yes, a lot of the people who come to the ICA nowadays are people who have done their MBA already, have done their MSCs already. So you feel that, okay, these are people who have deeper knowledge and have the understanding of the English language so that they can really express themselves at the end of the day. But then during our times of practice, our times of assignment and the times of discussions, you realize that people lack the confidence to be able to express themselves. Yes, they may have an idea about what is being asked. They may have an idea about what is being talked about, but they cannot confidently express themselves in the English language. And this is the challenge of many students and their inability to be able to pass the examination. If you are going to pass the case study exam, you have to understand that it is an English paper. And if it is an English paper, you need to be able to confidently express yourself in a compendious manner. In other words, you're not going to be talking too much, but you're going to be talking briefly in much detail so you can position yourself to really write out what has to be written in response to the question that is being asked. So look at yourself very well. I want you to be serious about this. You need to work on yourself. Yeah, this is not the time you're going to say, hey, Jira, I'm going to go read this, read that. But you need to build your confidence to be able to express yourself. For a couple of you, or maybe almost everybody, you have never really sat down to consciously express yourself in the English language because of these days, this day and age, the issue in relation to Microsoft Word, Grammarly and other tools available to deal with subject verb agreement to get, deal with grammatical context of any report that you write out. The truth of the case study examination is that you don't have Grammarly there with you. You don't have Microsoft Word to do autocorrect, to underline an expression and say, uh-uh, rearrange this expression. Oh, the verb that you use against the subject is not the right word, so change it up or spice it up a little bit. There is nothing like that. You're going to be on your own. So in order to position yourself to pass the examination, you have to be able to work on yourself and your ability to confidently express yourself. How do you do this? As you read the modules, as you read the various things in the case study syllabus, you need to be able to have your understanding and write out the things in your own words. Now, when you start, it's not going to sound great. It's not going to look great. You, it, it's not going to appear that you're doing anything, but you need to be able to practice that. And if you can do that in the next 12 weeks that we have before the examination, I can guarantee you, you are going to position yourself to pass the examination. And that is what you must understand when it comes to strategic case study. The bonus part has to do with your handwriting because there are many people who have horrible handwriting in addition to the poor grammar, grammatical expressions in their write-ups. So it is important that you work on your handwriting, especially if you have a poor handwriting, because that way you can then position yourself to be able to properly express yourself, have it clearly stated out so that you can get the marks that you are supposed to get at the end of the day. So, hey, when we talk about strategic case study, this is what you need to understand. And in this series, in each episode, we're going to be looking at key issues that you have to focus on, how to understand various models so that you can position yourself, go into the exam or in this examination diet and pass the exam. Because if you have the right blueprint, you have the right understanding, you have the ability to be able to express yourself very well, I can guarantee you, you can position yourself to ultimately pass the examination. Thanks for joining me on the series and I'll see you in the next episode as we get excited into the details of the strategy case study syllabus and also how you can position yourself to learn the things in the syllabus and also pass the examination. Subscribe to the channel, share this video with other people writing the strategy case study examination because my goal is for us to be able to help as many students as possible writing this paper so that they can all become successful because the stress and the pain of resetting for this paper over and over again can no longer continue. So I'll see you in the next episode as we continue with our discussion.